Did your child fail their newborn hearing screening? In this video, I'll explain testing, hearing impairment, and possible hearing device technology solutions. Coming up. Hi, I'm Dr. Derek, audiologist, audio engineer, and musician with ProfitHearing.com, bringing you the best insight in today's latest hearing aids, headphones, and audio technology to improve your life. If you have concerns about your hearing, always consult with your local physician or audiologist. Today I'm talking about newborn hearing screening and hearing device options. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, or CDC, in a 2017 survey, 1.7 out of 1,000 babies screened in the United States were identified with hearing loss. Newborn hearing screening is completed before a baby leaves the hospital. If a baby fails the newborn hearing screening, the testing is repeated and then additional follow-up can be completed by a pediatric audiologist. A failed newborn hearing screening can be the result of middle ear fluid, outer or middle ear abnormalities, or inner ear hearing loss. In some cases, a baby may initially fail their newborn hearing screening only to later pass. This is often the result of middle ear fluid that clears. A hearing screening can also detect inner ear hearing loss, also called sensor neural hearing loss, which is permanent. It's important to identify if a child has hearing loss as soon as possible so that your pediatrician can recommend an appropriate treatment plan. Impaired hearing can significantly impact speech and language development and overall communication. Your pediatric audiologist can make recommendations on whether to proceed with hearing aids or possibly consider cochlear implants. Note, however, that families of children who are born deaf may choose not to treat hearing loss and instead pursue sign language for communication. Ultimately, it's the parent's decision whether or not to treat hearing loss. There are two types of newborn hearing screening tests that can be used at a hospital. These tests are automated and result in a pass or fail result. Further diagnostic testing is recommended if the child fails a hearing screening. One hearing screening test is an otoacoustic emission, or OAE test. This plays a series of soft sounds into the ear canal and records whether there's a response from the inner ear sensory cells called hair cells. A reduced or absent response will likely result in a failed screening. Another test is the auditory brainstem response, or ABR. It may also be referred to as brainstem auditory evoked response, or Bayer. This test uses a small electrode on the head and behind the ears to record brainwave responses to sound played into the ear canal. If there's a reduced or absent brainwave response to the sound, this will likely result in a failed hearing screening. The ABR can be completed at a screening level, or the audiologist can use this exam to determine the child's hearing threshold levels. ABR data is used to fit children with hearing aids and also to determine whether a cochlear implant should be considered to treat hearing loss. If middle ear fluid is suspected, a test called tympanometry can be completed. This test uses fluctuating air pressure in the ear canal to see if the eardrum moves back and forth normally. If middle ear fluid is present, the eardrum mobility is often reduced. Fluid can prevent sound from passing into the ear normally. Once the child is older, behavioral testing can be completed in a sound booth by a pediatric audiologist. The audiologist will play sounds from side to side to see if the child responds to sounds with a head turn response or with certain activities like putting a ball in a bucket each time they hear the beeps. Speech discrimination testing can also be completed to see how the child understands words. Behavioral testing, as well as the automated testing discussed here, all help the audiologist determine the type, configuration, and degree of hearing loss. Your child may need several office visits over time to obtain the most complete picture of their hearing status. If you're receiving value from this video so far, please hit the like button so that more people can see this content and benefit from it. If you have concerns about your child's hearing, consult with your pediatrician and have an evaluation by a pediatric audiologist. Depending on the nature of the child's hearing loss, it may be treated by an ear, nose, and throat physician or ENT doctor with hearing aids or with cochlear implants. Hearing aids amplify the frequencies of sound that are not audible. They're custom tuned to an individual's hearing thresholds. Hearing aids provide more volume and speech clarity so that the words are easier to understand. Hearing aids give children access to sounds in their environment, aid their speech and language development, allow for effective communication, and assist in learning and comprehension of the world around them. In cases of more severe hearing loss, hearing aids may not provide enough benefit so a cochlear implant can be considered. Cochlear implants stimulate the auditory nerve with electrical impulses that the brain interprets as sound. This direct connection to the nerve bypasses the damaged part of the ear and sends a signal up to the brain. 
A cochlear implant uses an inner electrode device that's inserted into the inner ear, as well as a device that sits on the outside of the head or behind the ear. In the case of conductive hearing loss or single-sided deafness, your pediatric audiologist may recommend a bone-anchored hearing aid or Baja. This is a small device that sits behind the ear and vibrates against the bone. This bone-conducted sound transmits through the skull to the inner ear. A Baja device can be secured into place with a headband for children or with surgical implantation into the bone. This often results in a metal post implanted into the bone or a magnetic implant positioned just under the skin. Bone anchored hearing aids are also used for conductive and mixed hearing loss. Your child's pediatrician can refer you to a pediatric audiologist to guide you in selecting the most appropriate hearing technology for your child's needs. With any hearing loss, early intervention is key. The earlier the hearing loss is detected and treated, the better the outcome. Also, any hearing technology that's recommended by your audiologist should be worn every day to aid in your child's speech and language development. If you're looking for more information and resources on hearing loss in children, please refer to the link in the description below to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, or CDC, A Parent's Guide to Hearing Loss. Please like this video if you receive value from it. Comment below what questions do you have about newborn hearing screening and hearing device options. Click or tap the screen for more videos, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you know when the next video is posted. Also see the description below for more information. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.